everybody, and thank you so much for being here. Today, I'll be talking about nurses in business. By the end of my presentation, nurses will be able to examine the history and trailblazers in nursing entrepreneurship. You'll be able to identify what constitutes being a business owner as opposed to being an entrepreneur. You'll also be able to analyze the skill set and qualities of an entrepreneur. And then you'll be able to recognize how entrepreneurial nurses are changing the field of healthcare. And near the end of my presentation, I'm going to share five little known strategies and five of the biggest mistakes that nurse entrepreneurs can avoid in their business. But first, let me introduce myself. I am a catalyst for life transformation. I am that I communicate with sensitivity and boldness, withholding nothing. I am a creator. And because I create, nothing which I am experiencing is caused by anything outside of me. I am a channel through which spirit can shine forth. And my parents named me Mary Turner. What I do, I own five successful businesses, three of which have been in operation for over two decades. I'm a certified business coach and an expert in helping nurse entrepreneurs create profitable businesses that don't consume them. I think about my journey and I think about, okay, what do I wish I knew back when I was starting that could have helped me go faster and grow faster in my business? And here's the deal. Right now, there's never been a better time to be a nurse in business. Nurse businesses are skyrocketing. In fact, I will be sharing some delightful and disturbing facts about female entrepreneurship and nurses in business. Did you know that nurses have been in business since 1881, starting with Clarissa Barton, the founder of the American Red Cross? Starting a business is a big achievement, but maintaining one is the larger challenge. Business is filled with ups and downs. Up is better. I'm going to start off with the numbers because as the expression goes, the numbers don't lie. The numbers are stunning, to say the least. Some good and some not so good. When taking a look at your business, when you're examining your business, you might feel that your business is doing well. But when you look at your bank account, when you look at the numbers, the numbers tell the story, not your feelings. Sometimes we get mixed up in our feelings. And I'm going to use numbers today to actually share what is happening in the entrepreneurial world, because it's really important that we know this as nurses in business. Now, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. As a matter of fact, I stay away from negativity. I don't even watch the news. CNN, I call that constantly negative news. I avoid it. There's so many positive things going on in the world, but they focus on the negative. And I just stay away from it because at the end of the day, my peace is really important to me. And at the same time, let's say I get my credit card bill in the mail and I'm holding it. I'm holding the envelope and I won't open it. I won't open it because I have a mindset mindset of lack and scarcity, and I'm in complete avoidance of it. How does that benefit me? I avoid it because I'm scared to look at how much I owe in comparison to the amount of money in my bank account. And so I don't file my taxes because I haven't done the bookkeeping because I don't want to look at the numbers. I'm in complete avoidance. Well, eventually the collectors are going to come. And it's going to be a catastrophe. What will happen in your world if you just avoided everything? So let's jump into some numbers on female entrepreneurship because women 
are getting into business now more than ever before. Let's start off with some good numbers. In the last 50 years, women went from only 4.6% to 40% of all businesses. Isn't that wonderful? 4.6 to 40%. And between 2007 and 2020, women-owned businesses have increased five times more. That's 58%. And guess what segment of female-owned businesses are starting businesses more than any other segment? You guessed it, nurses and business. Women and nurse entrepreneurs all over the world are saying, I want to break the glass ceiling. What it says to me is that nurses are getting empowered. Nurses are claiming their power because they don't want to be told what to do. Nurses don't want to be told what to do. Imagine my boss telling me, you've got 45 minutes to pass meds, 30 minutes to chart, 15 minutes to do that, 10 minutes to do that. Nurses have said, you know what? I want more for myself. As a matter of fact, I want more for my kids. I want more for my family. And I want to make more of an impact into the lives of other women. I want more. So they go into business. With the current state of healthcare in the U.S. and the climate of healthcare reform, it has led nurse entrepreneurs to focus on alternative models of care to provide to their clients and patients. And this is leading to higher quality of life at a more affordable price, often with quicker access. So nurse entrepreneurs are starting holistic businesses, such as essential oils, cannabis research and education, health and wellness coaching, and the list goes on and on. What this also means is that the coaching world is exploding. Because these nurses are looking for business coaches. They're signing up and joining business coaching programs and hiring coaches, advisors, and mentors. Nurse entrepreneurs who are new to the business world and want to learn how to run a successful business, in the beginning, what they do is they look for the free stuff. Facebook groups, they do Google searches, look at blog posts. YouTube videos, and then they realize, you know what? I need a better way to make more money so that I can make a real impact. And that's when they get serious and hire a coach to help scale their business. 58% of businesses are women owned. Those are the good numbers. Now, let's look at the not so good numbers. All these nurse entrepreneurs are starting businesses. They're excited. They have great work ethic. They want this. They're putting their money down and investing in themselves and their business. They want their business to thrive. So they're hiring attorneys and CPAs to legitimize things. And now here is the number. Women-owned businesses across the board account for 4% of business revenue, 4%, 4% of revenue comes from women-owned businesses. And here's another number. 90% of women-owned businesses are generating less than 100,000 per year. These women and nurse entrepreneurs They have big hearts. These nurse entrepreneurs, especially the ones I know, are spiritual women. They're soulful women. They love to give. You know, they're charitable people. Many are helping people who are less fortunate. What I know for sure is that when women, particularly nurse entrepreneurs, have money, the world becomes a better place. Because nurse entrepreneurs and women have such open hearts, they just want to share because they care so much. But if you're making under $100,000 a year, that's not really giving you the lifestyle you want. 
It's not allowing you to make the impact you desire. And maybe you're making a little bit more than what you were making on your job. Who knows? Maybe a little bit less. Okay. Let me switch gears. Imagine this. Now, some of you, this might serve as a reminder, you old school entrepreneurs. We used to go to these seminars and we would sit and listen to the person at the front of the room. They would be talking about this really amazing product. And right before the end of the seminar, they would go, okay, for the first 100 people only, you see that table at the back of the room? There's my team. They're sitting there waiting. But we only have 100 courses. Everybody's standing up from their chairs and um, they're ready to make this mad dash to the back of the room because he's given this $100 course away for 10 bucks. And everybody is running to the back of the room even before this guy is finished because it's 90% off what it normally sells for. And we purchase it. Now we're celebrating, we're happy. We fire our boss, we get incorporated, or we get an LLC. We get this really nice domain, this bomb website, and nothing happens. And it's so sad. I've experienced it myself. And I know other business owners who have gone through this. That's what's going on right now. Everyone is thinking this is the new shiny object, the new thing, the new hot commodity, the new nurse coach, the new cannabis nurse, the new whatever, fill in the blank, right? Now we're in this business and you're saying to yourself, I spent all this money. Now what do I do? My business is not working. Now what do I do? It's absolutely heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. There are 114% more female entrepreneurs today, just in the United States, than 20 years ago. Across the world, it's even higher. 90.3% of women hold micro businesses as opposed to 82% of men. And the numbers are just growing more and more and more. And here is what I found out. So let's go back. Why is it that women-owned businesses are failing? Why is it? What's really going on? Well, in my research, I found that one of the reasons why women-owned businesses are failing is lack of support. Because you see, here's what's happening. And as a caveat, if you find this information eye-opening, or if you find it worthwhile, share it. Share it with someone in your circle. Share it because nurse entrepreneurs need to know this. This is not about bringing down the house or raining on somebody's parade or making things sad. It's about saying, if I know the numbers, then I can pivot. I can change. I can create something different. It's about claiming the fact that you can break the 100K ceiling. You can get the support and resources you need because now you know. Just like earlier when I talked about taking my bills and looking at the envelope and not even opening it. No, it's time to open the envelope. It's time to look at the numbers and then ask yourself, am I going to be simply another statistic or am I going to be one of the women that do not fall through the cracks? Are you going to be one of those nurse entrepreneurs to say, I had the courage to listen and take a different action? Ask yourself, do I have the courage to listen and take a different action? That's what's really important. So in my research, the other reason why women-owned businesses are failing, besides lack of support, well, imagine you are this amazing nurse entrepreneur. 
and you have this brilliant idea. You want to change the world and you start a business. But the people in your house, the people living with you, your family, they just don't get it. You're different. You walk to the beat of your own drum and you want to change the world. 80% of the world is like, get a job, have some security, work for 40 hours, for 40 years, retire. And then they give you a watch and say, thank you. And that's what normal people do. They go to school, get a job, blah, 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 blah. And you're saying, OMG, oh my God, I want something different. Those people don't get you. The people around you don't understand. So you still go and start this business and you're super excited. You don't care what the family is saying. And everyone in your family is saying things like, what are you going to do? What are you doing? And then it changes to show me the money <laughs> or where's the money. And then it changes again. Why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? And you start to get pushed down and pushed down and pushed down. So like a support, it asks the question, who can I count on? Who out there is doing what I'm doing? Who can I just vent to? Not so much complaining, because I believe that women need to vent. Just get it out. I always say better out than in. Who is there to listen to you? Because you already know if you go to your family members, they're going to be like, yeah, you're right. Quit. Go get a job. Finally, you figured it out. Finally, you came to your senses. But the truth of the matter is you came to your senses when you became a nurse entrepreneur. So networking, being surrounded by nurse entrepreneurs that get you, that understand you because they too are sheroes or heroes. Forbes talks about this. In fact, I found so many statistics on inadequate support systems affecting women business owners. It's unreal. We got to change that. What would a nurse entrepreneur achieve with a support system? Struggling or failing in business doesn't feel good. And no man or woman is an island. You can't do it alone. You tend to conquer your greatest challenges when you have support, when you have adequate connections, real referral partners, and even financial access or emotional backing. So what ends up happening when a nurse entrepreneur doesn't have that camaraderie? What happens to her? She feels alone. I recently had a conversation with the nurse in business. And it was an interesting conversation. She said she had to go back to the bedside and put her business aside. That's the impact of no support. And that's just one example. It takes on so many shapes and forms. Let's talk about the other reason why women-owned businesses have failed and don't hit 100K and they give up on their dreams. The other reason is doubts, fears, like fear of failure, worry, as well as all the mental blocks and thoughts that women are suffering with that have been driving women to fail, give up on their dreams and go back in their corner, curl up and resentment starts to build and sadness and depression. They're saying things like, I could have done it. I could have had something big, and now I don't. The truth of the matter is I've invested a lot of money in my business last year. In addition, I spent over 20K on a leadership development program and got very little results. Now, I can look at it and say, I'm out of that money, right? Or... I could just look at it as a stepping stone for what's next. 
The real question is, what did I learn from the experience? Because there's always something to learn. And guess what? What if nothing is a failure? What if nothing is a failure? What if my whole life, your whole life is nothing but just learning? Just learning, right? So the impact of no support, the impact of not having other nurse entrepreneurs around you say, hey, you know what? I went through the same thing. Just that simple. What's the impact of hearing that? Just imagine you tell me you're going through something and I'm listening to you. You have this beautiful, safe space to share whatever you want. And I'm just going to listen. Sometimes when I host a group coaching session for business owners, I might be coaching someone and another person in the group says, I went through that exact same thing. Or sometimes I'll ask the question, who else has felt that way? And everybody in the room hand goes up. It's in those moments that you feel heard and believe. You might even say, wow, I'm really not the only one. I'm not by myself. Others have gone through this. They've overcome. It gives you hope and new inspiration to keep going, to overcome whatever is in your way. Now that is priceless. What I find interesting are the number of nurses who spend thousands of dollars getting these various certifications. And there's nothing wrong with certifications, don't get me wrong. But they get all of these certifications, they have their full alphabet behind their name, and say, for example, I don't know, uh, a holistic nurse or a nurse coach or a cannabis nurse, but they don't invest one penny in learning how to run their business, how to operate their business, as if the certification will bring the clients, do the marketing, do the profit and loss, do the operations, do the this, do the that. And when they realize they have all these pieces of paper, all these certifications, and no business, no business skills, they simply do nothing. I recently had a conversation with the nurse entrepreneur. Now get this. She had been coaching clients for seven years. And she's a health and wellness coach. Then... She discovered that there was a health and wellness certification. Now, she had been coaching health and wellness clients for seven years. Then she found out, oh, there's a health and wellness certification. So she went and obtained it. And from that point on, she stuck. She lacked the confidence to coach clients. She was so worried about getting it right, saying the right thing. And I said to her, you're already a coach. You were a coach seven years ago before you even knew about a certification. So you're going to let a certification make you feel like you lack something? Like I said at the very beginning, I was going to share with you five little known strategies. And really, I haven't talked about these anywhere else. And I'm going to share five of the biggest mistakes that nurse entrepreneurs can avoid in their business. So if you haven't already done so, this is the time to get your pen and paper. Right now is your time to be a creator. We're all creators and creators create, leaders lead. And it's time to punch fear in the face and push perfectionism to the side. And I'm gonna help you go faster, especially with the strategies I share right now. Tip number one. And it's this, you got to start before you're ready. If you're a coach, start coaching. If you're a cannabis nurse, educate. If you're a speaker, speak. But you got to start before you're ready. And just know that if you write blogs, write a ton of blogs. Doesn't matter. And one of the mistakes on this one. Judging your results too early. You can't be too judgmental. 
now that I've been helping other creators and nurse entrepreneurs grow their businesses, I see one of the biggest mistakes nurse entrepreneurs make. Let's say you are a blogger. The one, uh, the only blog that you've sent out in the past 90 days is one, or let's say two, or let's say seven. And then you're asking yourself, well, why am I not making any traction? You have to have some consistency and you can't judge the results too early. You need to keep going. Keep on keeping on, okay? From my experience, to get things going, you have to be consistent. Reaching out sporadically, one or two times a week after you meet a new potential client, you're probably not gonna get there. So you gotta start before you're ready and just keep making contacts. You just can't be too judgmental. Let's say you have, you're a health and wellness coach. When you're just starting out, your coaching is going to be some of the worst coaching on the planet. And you will improve as you go. In fact, you know, I've been coaching for a long time and I have over 2,000 sessions. I was a mess in the beginning. I was a hot mess. And what I learned is I can't be too judgmental. Because the bottom line is, I have had a couple of failed businesses that led to the successful ones. Sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. And you got to fail forward. And you got to fail forward. And you got to fail forward. Tip number two. You got to answer the who and what questions. All right. Who is it you're serving and what problem do you solve for them? In fact, most nurse entrepreneurs have not answered this question. And it's the reason you're not making sales. You're just all over the place. Everybody is your client. Answer this. Why should someone do business with you as opposed to your neighbor? Why should they do business with you? Answer that question. That's the who and what question. Let's say you are a pregnancy doula. Your who could be something like this. This workout program is for women in their second trimester. See, that's very specific. The workout program is for women. And it's for women that are pregnant and that are in their second trimester. It's very specific. So who do you serve? should be very obvious. It's not some dude who needs workouts, clearly, okay? So that's the who. And then what problem do you solve? Even if you're doing comedy, like what problem do you solve? I have a nurse entrepreneur, she's amazing, and she does nurse comedy, and she is hilarious. And the problem she solves is letting people not take life so serious. And she gets people laughing that ordinarily they're like this. And it's just amazing to watch her in action. So what is your who and what question? If you haven't answered these questions, you haven't defined your target market. You haven't defined your target audience. Another word for this is value proposition. Who is it you're serving and what problem do you solve? And here's the mistake. You haven't defined your target audience. For those that have it, the mistake here is huge. And this is probably one of the major mistakes that's going to keep you from scaling. Tip number three. Is you, you, you're going to want to scale up. And you want to study successful nurse entrepreneurs. It's time to scale up. Now, I'm not talking about at the very beginning. At the very beginning, you just want to get out there and get your feet wet. But now that you've got your feet wet and you've got a few clients, you want to scale up. Okay? And what I mean by that is hone your skills. Start by asking yourself, what skills do I need to learn? Let's say you're a coach. 
In terms of coaching, you identify five to 10 coaches doing exactly what it is that you want to do that are successful. If you haven't taken the time to do this, here's your homework. Okay, start making a list, five to 10 coaches. And if you are a doula, get your list of five to 10 doulas, et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, if you can't find any nurses doing what you do, your vision is either about to tap into something super brilliant. And I'm not saying that this is impossible, but competition is good. In fact, have you ever felt discouraged by competition? Have you ever heard yourself saying, I just feel like there's too many people doing what I'm doing. There's too many cannabis nurses. There are too many essential oil distributors, too many Reiki masters, too many fitness nurses doing the work. Competition is a good thing, especially if the competition is successful. Why? Because it demonstrates that people will purchase it. If what you want to do is not found, that's not a complete guarantee that you won't be able to do it. Your business is inside of you. You and only you decide. If it is a particular niche, don't worry, because you're going to do it differently. You're going to be you. You're not going to copy these five to 10 successful nurse entrepreneurs. You're going to do your style, your version, and a different approach. It's just going to be proof. It's just going to provide you the proof there is an audience for what you're wanting to do. So when you've identified five to 10 nurse entrepreneurs, watch, and I mean really study them. Again, not to copy them, because success leaves clues. That's why you're going to do it. Success leaves clues. You might end up taking a little bit from this one, a little bit from that, and have a combination of blend of all 10, and it'll be your own, okay? But it's also going to serve people the way that you serve people, your style. And people who resonate with your style will do business with you. We live in an abundant universe, and what's meant for you is meant for you. And here's the mistake, not shortening your learning curve. There are two ways to give wisdom, right? One is your mistake. Mistakes cost money. And that's the slowest way to get wisdom. You can probably relate. Like, what are some of the mistakes you made in your life? I think about growing up and... There were some times when, you know, I was partying in my college days and I drank too much. One morning after drinking, I wake up and I have this massive headache. And truth be told, I don't even know how I got back to my dorm. I had no recollection what happened from the party to me getting home. So, okay, I learned. I learned. Don't do that again. I got some wisdom out of it. And again, there's two ways to get wisdom. One is your own mistakes. The other is other people's mistakes. It's the fastest way to get wisdom. That's the beauty of buying a book. A book is 20 bucks, right? And you get 10, 20, 35 years of experience for 20 bucks. And it's other people's mistakes. That's what this presentation is all about. Shortening the learning curve. I've had some successes. And sure, along the way, I've learned a lot of things. And I've also had some failed businesses. But I've learned throughout the entire journey. So you shorten your learning curve by investing in wisdom and by looking at somebody else that can say, you know what, I wasted a year doing this, don't do that. I wasted three years without getting this information, here it is. So you gotta shorten your learning curve. And there's an old African proverb that goes like this. 
If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Tip number four, play to win. How many of us play to win? Trying not to lose is not the same thing as playing to win. Trying not to lose is reactionary at best. Most of the time, it prevents you from winning. Worst of all, it starts with the belief that you should focus on not losing, which gives the idea of losing, which becomes powerless. Playing to win begins with the belief you can and you will win. It's empowering. The belief that you can win and the desire to do so allows you to take initiative, to be resourceful, and to take the necessary actions that will give you a better chance of winning. There are no guarantees. Even if taking some of those actions come with a particular risk, when you play to win, you're willing to take calculated risk. The mistake. Playing not to lose. Put another way, playing it safe. Are you playing to win? Are you playing not to lose? What would you do differently if you change from playing not to lose to playing to win? Here's tip number five. And it's this. Commit. Pretty simple, huh? Commit. What's the mistake? Dabble. Really, now that I think about it, this actually could have been tip number one. Because I actually think the main reason a lot of nurse entrepreneurs don't reach 100K is because they've actually never made a real commitment to getting there. Like commitment is the foundation of all accomplishment. Like commitment is like little choices we make every single day that lead to the final results we're looking for. My aunt and uncle, I remember when they first got married. I was just a kid. But I remember it because it was the very first wedding I ever attended. It's been 50 years and they posted their wedding anniversary on Facebook. I asked them, how did you stay together all these years with all these marriages breaking up and people unhappy? What did you do differently? And he gave me one word, commitment. I'm sure they had their days when one or the other wanted to leave, plenty of disagreements, arguments, differences of opinion, but their commitment was bigger than their challenges. Their commitment. Business growth is hard, not saying it's going to be easy. If you listen to someone or if you're following someone and they're like, oh, it's easy, chances are they're lying to you. And again, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying it's worth it. So stop dabbling. Let's say you want to be a brick house, 36, 24, 36. And you're up late one night, you're watching TV and this infomercial comes on and you see this Nordic track and the lady, her body is like, Pah! and you want to look like that, 36, 24, 36, uh -oh. and then you take the plunge, you buy the Nordic track and then it comes to your house and you get it all set up and you work on it for a couple of days and then it becomes the storage for your clothes. <laughs> okay, commitment. I really believe that if you do the first four tips and you commit and you stop dabbling, when the obstacles and challenges come, and they will, they will come, Keep learning, keep adapting, keep pivoting, keep leveling up. There's something about moving from dabbling to deciding, you know what, I'm all in. And commitment will transform not only your business, 
but you're alive. That's it for now.